Today I'm delighted that I'm being joined by Rachel Young from my zone. Um, a lot of you will have seen Rachel, uh, she's got some great vlogs and, and blogs that she does um, and works really hard promoting the great stuff that my zone does and anybody watching these will know that my zone is something that I've used for an awful long time. I'm, I think I'm three or four months off Hall of Fame so I'm really chuffed with my achievements so far but that's enough about me. Rachel, Give us a quick intro, who you are and what you do and what, what's my zone up to at the moment? Sure. Well, first off, thanks for having me here, David. Um, really proud to be here on behalf of my zone and kind of on behalf of myself. I always introduce myself as, you know, I'm Rachel Young and I'm addicted to the fitness industry. Fact, that's where it starts. I'm currently the director of business development for my zone um, across EMEA looking after our distributor network, um, the existing network and building, building the kind of awareness across Europe, Middle East and Africa mm -hmm. and also working now quite closely with some key key kind of chains and uh, operators within the UK. Okay excellent and my zone because I'm a member of a gym so my, my zone is me it's me on my bike it's me running it's me playing squat things like that so it's the, the belt itself can be used by me as an individual but it can be used by operators like you, you just did. Yeah, sure. And the thing that my zone is my zone because it's it's my zone, like you've just described. It's all about you. Uh, my zone is that has one key focus, and that's to make people feel good about exercise, whether they're inside of a club or outside. And it is not specific to a type of or a modality of exercising. So it doesn't matter if you're doing pole voting or Pilates. My zone will ref, ref, um, reward your effort. And it's all about the effort that you put into an individual kind of session or workout. And what really resonates with me and why I'm with the brand is that it's, I see it as all inclusive. It is about my mum could train next to a pro athlete. Mm -hmm. And as long as they're working into the zones, the same specific zones, they're having a same experience. Mm -hmm. If you say to that pro athlete, we want you at X percent of your heart rate max, they'll go, yeah, cool, go for it. Mm -hmm. If you say to my mum, I want you at X percent. She's glazed over and fallen asleep. Yeah. So it, it brings it. It's way more um, kind of doable. It's way more achievable and accessible mm. to all, irrespective of their training, whether it's like you said, inside of a club or outside of a club mm. or outside in a in the streets. Mm. What I really like is the nudges. It's the, the social communication, the people I'm connected to that I know that are in the sector that, you know, will like or they'll comment on something. And I, and I think that piece it is also partly a driver for me, a motivator for me, because I don't want to let myself down by not getting yeah. points for the month. But I also, you know, you get nudges from people saying, oh, you're a bit quiet today, or that was impressive or whatever. And I think that's been really positive, particularly in lockdown. I think that's done me a lot of good. You hit the head nail on the head. The key element is... Well, I think the, the main key feature is the fact of community. And we all in the industry, I've been here over 30 years, we bang on about community and creating a community. I don't think anything, I've never experienced anything that creates such community than my zone. Mm. And my relationship with, I've known, the, you know, Dave for, for many years, I've known the brand and the business, I kind of dipped in and out, but my experience of my zone um, over the last couple of years, I was working very closely with them on projects, totally fell for it. And my mm. relationship with the product went to a whole new level because of how it had an impact on me personally. Mm and how I could see the potential for it in way more markets, in mm. way more, it, it changes people's lives. We want to get people moving to, you know, I was put on this planet to pe get people moving physically and mentally. My zone is my tool to kind of achieve my, mm. you know, one of my legacies, my goals. I just want to get people moving. So if I can do that through my zone and build that connection and connectivity, that's kind of spot on. And I think, what I realized during lockdown, amongst a gazillion other things, was the, the way I was able to connect with people across the globe and people that I don't know, I, I now refer to as my furlough friends, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know them if they kind of punched me on the nose right. or I met them in the street, but I know their workouts, I know their habits, mm -hmm. and I've connected with them because, and maybe I've seen a picture of their workout or something that looked challenging and gone, hey, what was that? Mm. They want to respond because we've got that one common goal going, it was, a, it was an ultra marathon, it's my first one. Mm. Brilliant. It's just, it's a community of like-minded people doing the same thing and they want to keep up each other moving. You can see the trends 
Now, yeah. I've used it in lockdown to see people who have gone from a consistent number of MEPs a month mm -hmm. who've dropped right down. Yeah. Now, for me, that's not that's a flag to, okay, how are you doing? That's the, mm -hmm. I might need some help. So we're able to reach out to them. Hey, how are you doing? Do you know what? I'm, I'm struggling a little bit of this mm -hmm. or I can't find a way to work out. So it, it's a really good barometer of people's kind of feelings and emotions and, yeah. and staying, staying connected. And, and I, 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 that's a, for me is a really interesting point because I, like an awful lot of other people, really struggle with that, almost admitting that I'm feeling a bit flat, I'm a bit down. And the closest I ever get really to publicly saying that I'm strong is, is I'll, I'll, I'll put a message on my MyZone that will say heavy legs or it will say really not feeling it today. And, and I, I really admire you for your, your openness, your ability to articulate how you're feeling and what you're doing. You've got some great blogs and vlogs. You, you post videos that you talk about how you're feeling. Why do you do that? What, 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 what work, what's working for you when you do those types of things? I think it kind of came from a, um, you know, been, like I've been in the, I eat, sleep and breathe fitness, been in the fitness industry forever, as I've said, and it's, it's kind of my comfy place. It's my comfy place and it's my safe place. Mm -hmm. um, always felt I've been quite successful on my journey, but there was one thing that was always holding me back and that, that was me, um, a massive self-destruct um, almost when I was being successful, in, like imposter syndrome that people mm. talked about. And I was all, I'm always busy. I always like to do stuff. And I realized that I was doing more and more stuff to put, to put off doing what I actually really needed to do. Mm. And lockdown, um, you know, we, the challenges of it and it's, you know, the tragedies around it as a given mm. lockdown made me look in the mirror. I had no option. I'm the extrovert. I'm the yellow person. I am the throwing the fitness party in, in, in clubs and in, in operations. Mm. And it made me look in. So I was, I was really scared to be frank with you. I was really scared at the beginning of lockdown for not, not for a Corona, but mm. for me, what it was going to do to me. Mm. So I've always worked out. So I threw myself into my workouts and I decided I would hold myself accountable. And it was just for me by making a video. And I just made some Facebook live videos mm. just for me. I didn't know what they were going to look like or, and I actually didn't really care. It was me looking back at that, so thinking, I know how I felt. I know what I've said. You've mm. got to hold yourself accountable. So kind of two things happened here was that I started to get feedback from people going, thanks so much for sharing that. Or I've had a bit of a bum day or, you know, re you know, my comments were resonating with their feelings. So it just kind of kept progressing and progressing. And as I was looking in, I realized that I didn't want to waste any of my furlough time. I was going to learn and I was going to start Operation Project Rachel. Um, I've always been told that I was not going to be good at school. I was thrown out of class. I had the attention span of a gnat and it must have been for a reason. So I decided to do a lot of kind of personal development, but actually really understand how I learn. Now, a big part of that is what my zone has done for me. So I put my my zone belt on. And I call it hit learning because I, I cannot learn. I, can't, I, can, I can learn now. Mm -hmm. I'll open a book, I'll start to read it, and then I'll be seeing something shiny over there or I've got distracted or I'm reading the same line over and over. So for years and years, I, I call it sh sell, uh, shelf care because I was buying all these books and just sticking them on my shelf. Mm -hmm. I did read them and some of it must have gone in, but you know, not the whole ticket. But what I found was with my mind zone was, it was holding myself account accountable physically, but I could put myself into a zone. So my body was occupied. So I may be in the green zone, plug my headphones in. Right. And actually for the first time, what I was listening to was going in. Now this might not seem like rocket science. It actually shocked me mm. because it shocked me because all those times when people say, Rachel, pay attention. You'll never be good enough. You can't learn. Why are you pushing yourself that way? You need to stop. All of that stuff that I'd worn, worn for years, I realized that I could put myself in hit learning, retain and mm -hmm. be able to communicate it. Right. So then my, my kind of sweaty ramblings as people referred them to them um, kind of grew into me sharing my story of how I've learned, it's a science project, yeah. my story of how I've learned and actually 
probably what stopped me from learning. Mm. Now, I, I, I come from a very privileged, everyone's talking about privilege. Yeah, I come from a very privileged background. I went to probably one of the best schools in England and I was told I wasn't good enough. Yeah, I never spoke out about anything because I had that bit of a label that the people worse off than me, you're in the best school in the UK, you've got to sort yourself out. So it was almost like I was using that whole lockdown time to not bitch and moan in any way. And this mm -hmm. is not a you know finger pointing no. exercise. This is all about how do I share from my experiences to make a difference to someone's life? So if I can make a difference to someone's thinking, attitude, approach, and so that people actually live their life and enjoy it, not mm -hmm. endure it, that's a that that's a win for me. Brilliant. My learnings from and I want to do more projects with schools. I'd like to do more mm. with schools and kids because my um, my ADHD went unnoticed for many years and mm. was treated with um, bad behaviour. So throw me out of the class. Um, I, I was epileptic. Right. I've never, ever, 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 ever had an epileptic fit in my life. Mm. But they said I was epileptic. Right. <laughs> I just couldn't sit still. Mm. So there was lots of kind of mis yeah. misdiagnosis and if I can do something to make a difference to the grown-ups, to the kids, to the schools, to help people learn, um, and it's been a real journey of understanding who I am, mm -hmm. and what I'm worth, and I want to say what I'm capable of, but I actually don't understand that okay. yet because it's mm -hmm. getting better and better. Yeah. I fall off the wagon. You know, I get stuck on things, mm -hmm. um, but it's just the science project. Okay. I just want to help. Brilliant. So where can viewers go to have a look at your, your sweaty ramblings, as you refer to? <laughs> sweaty ramblings. So I throughout that journey, um, someone said to me at the beginning, you just need to save all of these videos. Mm. I was like, really? So I saved them all. And then I realized that um, someone else kind of said to me, well, why don't you put them in a website? Right. So I've never built a website. <laughs> I'm not very good at sitting still. Right. I did get a little bit of help. Um, and I just put it all into a website that's called Are You Supercharged? And Are You Supercharged for me is about kind of two or two approaches. Are you one million miles an hour? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you not slow down? Are you constantly distracted? And that could be an ADHD thing or it could be the fact that you actually are alive in the year 2020 mm -hmm. because of all the distractions and the communications yeah. and the craziness that's, that's going on. Um, so I put them into a website, but my daily sweaty ramble it's normally go on Instagram again under Are You Supercharged? Mm -hmm. And I refer back to my training, um, what I'm learning through the kind of the physical side of my my workouts. And, you know, I, yeah. I've also realized that I threw myself into different. I love CrossFit. I love right. skiing. Yeah. I love those kind of trainings. And when I look back on it and group training and when I look back on it, they're the kind of sports that you or training that you have to fully concentrate on mm. you know if you uh if you lose concentration while you're olympic lifting you're going to drop the bar on your head so i guess it kind of goes back to the focus the control and the discipline yeah. that we've we've been talking about that i'm, I'm getting to understand mm. so you haven't got long left because we, we only do these for 15 minutes you have literally a minute left oh. what do you want to see different from sport and physical activity and fitness post-covid what have we got to Post -COVID, do? Post-COVID, I'm going to just rant, okay? Okay, go. Accessible to everybody. Everybody. What, not, what do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, accessible to everybody, not just the fit. The perception of the fitness industry is I'm not fit enough to join a gym. Mm -hmm. I'm not um, good-looking enough to join mm -hmm. a gym. I haven't got the right clothes to join a gym. I want us to open up the doors and be all-inclusive in that respect. I want the trade associations who are being more collaborative to go, right, you're really good at this bit. We're mm -hmm. really good at that bit. Yeah. And we're going to pull it all together. Good. I've reached outside of the industry um, to learn more about what's going on mm -hmm. inside. I spoke to somebody for seven minutes about diversity and inclusion in the fitness industry. I learned more in seven minutes than I've done in 30 years. Wow. So I'm part of the problem. Okay. So okay. I think we all need to accept responsibility. Mm -hmm. Leaders need to understand, step up and go, actually, I've made some mistakes. 
I'm going to make some mistakes moving forward, but I want to learn and change. So CEO level and leadership mm-hmm. level and supplier level, and also what we do for the kids or the, you know, the troops that are moving up the ranks of our future leaders, what we do to develop and educate them in terms of diversity of thinking, getting people moving and the benefits of physical activity on your mental health. Mm-hmm. as not just something we talk about. We need to be, you know, that's why I will openly rant about all of those things to share. I'm openly yeah. sharing about what it's done for me. Brilliant. That is just a bit over the time, but I knew you were going to go. <laughs> that is absolutely fabulous, Rachel. Thank you so much. And, and don't forget, people that are watching, have a look at, at Rachel's vlogs. Are you supercharged? Absolutely fantastic.